Hello, and welcome to Now Where Were We? A series of short videos about the history of Olympia, Lacey, and surrounding areas. Your host for this program is Deborah Ross. In this series, Deb takes us to locations that inform us about the history of our community. She also visits with local historians. We welcome your feedback and suggestions. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Now Where Were We? An ongoing series of short videos about the history of Olympia, Lacing, and surrounding areas. My name is Deborah Ross, and today I'm in Northeast Olympia in the Olympia Avenue Local Historic District, one of five historic districts in this city. The Local Historic District was accepted in 2005 and encompasses a wide range of architectural styles and periods, ranging from 1866 all the way up to 1954. It is connected with many important families in Olympia history, many involved in local and state and territory-wide politics, law, and women's issues. And today I'm going to focus on four sites, and they're all associated with the historic White and Bigelow families. The Bigelow House is located just a couple of blocks north of here, and Olympia Avenue is adjacent to the Bigelow's historic donation claim. But this property was originally platted by John Swan, who was an orchardist. And John Swan named the streets in this part of Olympia after the trees that he grew in his orchards. The house that we're standing in front of now, the Ruddle House, is the oldest house in the Olympia Avenue Historic District and one of the oldest houses in Olympia itself. The house was built by Stephen Ruddle and Margaret Stewart White Ruddle, both of whom played a significant role in the early history of Thurston County. William White came west from Wisconsin in 1850, having been advised that the Pacific Northwest would be good for his health. His wife, Margaret Stewart White, followed on the Oregon Trail two years later along with their five children, including a nursing baby, having many adventures along the way. The Whites eventually settled on a prairie east of Olympia in what is now Lacey. The Whites' oldest daughter, a teenaged Anne Elizabeth, taught school on the prairie, but soon married Daniel Bigelow and settled with him in Olympia. In a previous episode, we met Daniel and Anne Elizabeth and visited their home, now the Bigelow House Museum. In 1855, a series of skirmishes between the newly arrived American settlers and the Native Americans in the area broke out, fanned by misunderstandings and misinterpretations of treaty rights that were being negotiated between the United States and the tribes. These skirmishes resulted in the deaths of several Native Americans and American settlers, including William White. Margaret White and her younger children moved in with the Bigelows for a time, but after about a year she married Stephen Ruddle, another pioneer on the prairie, and himself a widower. Ruddle Road in Lacey is named after the Ruddle family. The Ruddles lived on the prairie for some time, but in the early 1860s, Margaret and Stephen purchased property from John Swan and built this house in about 1866. The home was a short walk to the Bigelow's house and near enough to the capital for Stephen to become involved in territorial politics. By 1890, all three of Margaret's daughters had built homes nearby, and we will be visiting sites associated with them in a few moments. Before we do, let's take a moment to look at the Ruddle House, shown here in the 1879 bird's eye view of Olympia. It's an unusual one for Olympia, and it's reminiscent of New England style houses with its asymmetrical roof line. We're now going to visit another historic site associated with the White and Bigelow families the site of the Olympia Collegiate Institute, just a block west of here.
We're standing at the foot of the Olympia Avenue Local Historic District at the intersection of East Bay Drive and Olympia Avenue. Behind me is the foot of Bud Inlet. And as we've seen in old maps in previous episodes, that body of water was once the Swantown Slough, which extended as far as uh, Union Avenue. To my left is the site of the Olympia Collegiate Institute, previously the Puget Sound Wesleyan Institute, which was founded in part by Daniel and Ann Elizabeth Bigelow. The Bigelows were staunch Methodists as well as supporters of education, and these private schools were connected with the Methodist denomination. Several children of prominent citizens attended the institute and many grew up to be politicians and other public figures, not only in Olympia, but in Washington Territory and Washington State. We're now at the third site associated with the White family. This is the Bird House built by Mary White Bird and her husband, George Bird. George was an industrialist from Tacoma, but he later became a member of the Territorial Legislature of Washington Territory. This small home is one of the most elaborate Queen Anne-style houses in Olympia. It's on the local and national register for its importance both in connection with the White and Bird families but also its elaborate Queen Anne style. The Queen Anne style became very popular in the 1880s and 1890s, particularly with the advent of mechanical lathes, which allowed wood turners to make a wide variety of shapes and sizes of shingling and uh, decorative features that you see here and is very carefully and beautifully maintained, showing off all the many, many uh, architectural features of this beautiful home. We're now going to move on to the fourth site associated with the White family, the Dunbar House. I'm now at the Dunbar House, just a couple of doors up from the Bird House. Clara White Dunbar was the third sister in the White family and she married Ralph Oregon Dunbar, an attorney. He traveled along the Oregon Trail with his father, Rice Dunbar, and the infamous Donner Party. Fortunately, Rice Dunbar and his party decided to go north to Oregon Territory, where the rest of the Donner Party headed west to California and met their doom. Clara Dunbar was president of the Women's Club and active in women's issues. And she also hosted a salon here when Olympia Avenue was the home of many prominent women and men active in law and politics in Olympia. This completes our short tour of the Olympia Avenue Local Historic District. I encourage you to come here and visit and see many of the other beautiful homes along this avenue. Many of them are on the local register and you'll recognize them by the bronze plaque on their doors or in front of their homes. And you can learn more about them by visiting the website that's going to be provided to you at the end of this video. Again, until next time, I'm Deborah Ross. Thank you. Thank you.